Welcome to everybody's favorite shit show. I'm your host, Liam, and today's video actually uses my voice. I know exactly how you're feeling right now. My disappointment is immeasurable, and my day is ruined. And if that is the case, feel free to just mute the video, play some music in the background, and enjoy it. But if you do plan to watch this video with the volume on, let me explain what's going down in this video. This video is not about how to improve your art, it's not me giving you anatomy tips, it's not me teaching you color theory. It's just opinions and tips and tricks that I've picked up from being an artist online. Now, that being said, all of this is opinions, all of these are just advice, you don't need to follow through with any of them, and you can obviously cherry pick what you do, what you use, and what you don't want to even focus on. Now, the first thing that you need to focus on is your branding. Branding comes in the form of a profile picture, a logo, a watermark, but the most important form of branding is your username. Shorter usernames are easier to remember, they're easier to spell, but that doesn't mean that longer usernames are not good. An example of a long username that works is Creepshow Art and Captain Sparkles, both of which are very long character-wise, but because they're broken up using other words, it's a lot easier to remember and it's a lot easier to spell. Usernames that use a lot of numbers are kind of harder to recall due to the fact that the order of numbers may be completely random. Plus, using numbers in your username doesn't really look super professional. However, people who want to do art online probably aren't always looking to be a professional. It's just sort of like a tip. If you can avoid numbers, please avoid numbers. Now, some people have a really hard time coming up with unique usernames, and my very simple remedy is to use a website called SpinXO. SpinXO randomly generates usernames using words and letters to come up with unique sort of titles you could use. Now, the plus side with using SpinXO is the fact that if you like one of the usernames from the generated list, you can click on that username and it will show you whether or not it's available or taken on certain websites. This leads me to my second point, and that is the websites you choose to be on. I thought that I had to be on every single website imaginable. In reality, this really is not the case. You really just need accounts on very popular platforms that also host some sort of artist community. Three examples are Instagram, DeviantArt, and Tumblr. But the thing that you need to be concerning yourself with the websites you're on is your target audience. If the website you are on is full of older people, older generations, boomers, and your art is meant to pertain to millennials and Gen Z and all that mess, you probably don't want to be on that website. Now, a function that most websites use is the function of hashtags. The way hashtags work is that if a person likes several photos, the website will go look through all of those photos, look through all of the tags, and tries to find some sort of similar tag within all of these images. If that tag happens to be hashtag hashtag cat, then that website is going to start recommending a lot more photos and videos that are tagged as cat. So that's a really great way to get your art out to an audience. Now my recommended method of hashtagging is the milk method without inappropriately or inaccurately representing what your post is about. Let's take the speed paint as an example. This is a digital drawing of Mega Pearl from Steven Universe Future. Now, that alone can give me several hashtags. First of all, I have Mega Pearl, I have Pink Pearl, and I have Pearl, all of which are related to the character. Then I have Steven Universe, Steven Universe Future, SU, SUF, which are all related to the show this character is from. Now, because it's a digital piece, I could tag it as digital art, digital drawing, digital painting, and because it's art, I could tag it as art and drawing. I would not tag it as painting because that would imply that I used actual paints, you know, acrylic, watercolor, oil base, and that is misrepresenting the post. Now there are additional ways that you could be tagging your piece, and that is by using whatever programs and software that you are using. So because I drew this on an iPad, I could tag it as iPad, iPad Pro, and because I use an Apple Pencil, of course I could tag it as Apple Pencil. I also used Autodesk Sketchbook in order to sketch it, and I used Medibang Paint to actually do the lining and the speed paint, so of course I would tag it as those as well. 
Now, hashtags are obviously a big part of your upload and a lot of beginning artists think that they need to be uploading every single day, multiple times a day. And in reality, what this causes is a lot of burnout, a lot of art block, and a lot of disinterest in doing art in general. Now, if you want to upload every single day, that is of course your choice. I'm just here to say, be aware of art block and burnout. You don't want to be burnt out. It just sucks. It sucks for everybody. So if you do want to upload every single day, what I suggest is to not upload completely finished, fully rendered pieces. You can obviously upload your warm-up doodles, you can upload whips, you can upload just the line art. You do not have to have fully inked, fully colored, fully shaded, fully overlaid pieces in order to justify some sort of post. What I used to do when I was younger, I would create a piece and then immediately create another piece, wait a day, create a piece, wait a day, create a piece, wait a day, create a piece, and then I would upload my old pieces kind of slowly and incrementally so that way I'm uploading old pieces at a good schedule but I'm not burning myself out. So that may be an option for anybody who's looking to upload very regularly. In my opinion, the most a person should be uploading is once every week and the least is probably once every other week. But of course, everybody's different and I do need to say, you're a 10 year old and enthusiasm and your 10 year old energy is going to burn out by the time you turn 12. Now, something that I think every single artist should have way before they even start thinking of commissions is to make a terms of service. A terms of service is a document that basically lays out a lot of rules that an artist expects from a commissioner and what a commissioner should be expecting from the artist. It's not necessarily a one way street. So here are some things that I believe every artist should include in their terms of service. One, have a rule that states that you will accept 50% of the price up front before you begin any sort of work. Now, I have this rule in my terms of service because of some pretty shitty people and I'm really thinking about making a commission horror story just so that way everybody can know how fucking stupid I am. <laughs> Two, have a section of things that you will not draw. This makes it a lot easier on you and it makes it a lot easier on people seeking art to know what you are willing to draw and what you are absolutely not never going to draw. So that way you don't get a lot of DMs asking, hey, will you draw this, that, and this, and all of which are things that you just don't either like to do, can't do, or won't do. Three, having a payment plan is a great addition to a terms of service as it lets people know what currency they need to be sending money in, what websites they can use to send money to you, any sort of way that you prefer getting paid, you know, through invoices or if they just send it through your bank account. This is just a really good way so that way everybody involved knows exactly how to plan and can plan accordingly to a commission. Four, adding a form in your terms of service really does help because if you have a form, they can literally just copy and paste and fill in any sort of information that you need in order to make their commission happen. I personally go with username just because I need to remember who I owe art to, um, the size, you know, headshot all the way to full body, the style, any sort of details about expressions and posing and what have you. But in my own form, I actually have a section for a code. Now, this part is absolutely optional. I chose to have this sort of I agree checkbox statement in order for me to actually be able to enforce any of my rules. What happens is a person who wants to commission me has to physically click a button that states that they agree to all of my terms and therefore agrees to any sort of punishment or penalizing action I choose to take against them. This basically means if they break any rule in my terms of service or make me super uncomfortable and objectify me, I can cancel their commission and because I have in fine print how I go about cancellations, they kind of just have to, you know, tough it up. Now, if you don't know how to format a terms of service, I do have a free to use template on DeviantArt that you can take and edit and do as you please to it. They are in the form of a Google document as you can send out the link and edit it 87 times and the link will still be the exact same no matter what. And there are tips that I have put inside of the document to help you 
don't think about how you should be wording things, how you should be formatting stuff. And there is a section about how to make this I agree checkbox work. And I even have a section for a copy and paste commission cancellation in case you're super non-confrontational or you just don't know how to word it and be professional about it. So fear not, that's there for you. Now that about sums up all the tips that I can think of off the top of my head that I think will help beginning artists help make their career online a little bit more manageable. Now I can practically hear you through the screen just saying stuff like, well, you don't follow through with some of the stuff that you even told us to do, so why are you telling us to do these things? And the answer to that, my dear viewer, is coaches don't play, you know? I know, the only time I ever upload art is when I decide to slither out of my crusty bed sheets to show you guys something I did three months prior that I just didn't have any desire to work on because I am, god dang it, I am just surrounded by art block. <laughs> but all that said, I really do hope that somebody somewhere found at least one thing in this video helpful, and if you didn't, tell me I'm a stupid bitch. <laughs> Anyways, sincerely yours and whatnot. I'm yours.